Hey guys, Mars Singer here bringing another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle video and so today we are going to be talking about the hint that was posted earlier on on both the Global and JP Twitter accounts basically hinting at the uh, end of year, whatever, part two, Christmas, like, everyone calls it different things right, some people are calling it the part two LR even though technically the crossover campaign does finish and this will be the start of like the winter campaign. They always give it some sort of like wintry name. For Global, obviously, we're going to get the Tanabata banner that has the uh, full power Super Saiyan 4 Goku and the eight year LRs on it. Um, but whatever you want to call it, right, this the LR that comes out in December. It's not technically part two. So I don't know, Christmas LR, whatever you want to call it. It's coming out on both versions at the same time because both this image was posted by both the JP and the Global Twitter account. Now, What's funny is I'd already some, seen some people speculating about this as a choice for the LR. I think I even talked about it in the video that I made last week, um, and we mentioned it on the podcast briefly as well. So, as I'm sure, you, well, as I'm sure you've probably seen at this point, right? This news was posted at 1 a.m. UK time, so typically posted like an hour after I went to bed. So I didn't see it until I'd woken up, and by then everybody had already posted their thoughts and their speculation, and you know. People seem to pretty much be in agreement what this is an indication of, right? So if you take a look, it's just a yellow uh, rectangle with a blue, orange, and purple, like, square around another rectangle, I was going to say column, in it. Um, and basically, if you start from blue going from left to right, you've got Vegeta, Goku, and Trunks, right? They're primary colors of their clothing. And then the yellow box around them is to represent the Super Saiyan aura. So, of course, this is a Vegeta, Goku, and Trunks from the Android 13 movie, which, as I've said, is one of the things that people have been speculating as a choice for the end of year LR um, already, right? So... You know, it's it's cool them when they post these like cryptic hint things because obviously I say, oh yeah, this is what it is, right? But this is what everybody has kind of collectively agreed that it's going to be. We still don't actually know for sure, but I mean, it seems pretty likely, right? And one of the big things that had led to this speculation is Heroes actually released a card recently, the actual Heroes game itself, right? The arcade game, not the Heroes Celebration in Dokkan. Heroes actually released a card of these three together obviously represented from the 13 movie, but with new, really nice updated art. And um, shout out to my boy Ignadex, uh, he's a regular for the channel, um, posted this image. This is a promotional image for Heroes. Like you can see, there's the Ultra Instinct uh, beat and note at the bottom, right? The actual Avatar Heroes characters. But we can forget about them, they're off to one side. But there is the Super Saiyan, Vegeta, Goku and Trunks. Blue, orange, purple, right? And this could be LRR. I mean, look at the shading on it. It basically is like an LRR already, right? So this is the number one popular speculation for what the LR is going to be. It's coming to both versions on the, at the same time. It is a carnival LR. So a lot of interesting things to think about for this card. Like what will they do? I speculated a little bit in that video I made. Will it be just the trio together like this? I think it probably will. Um, or we could see something like it being Vegeta and Trunks with a standby into Goku. But I think we're probably going to see this. Now that I've seen this art especially, I feel like this is going to be the LR art for the card. Now I think this is a really cool pick. They could obviously have an active skill or a standby or something that ends with Goku doing the Spirit Bomb Absorbed like Mega Punch thing. Or it could not have that at all, right? It, hopefully we get some sort of like Dokkan original combo super attacks. That would be really awesome as well. Um, so there's a lot of things to think about and things we could expect to see from the release of this card. So obviously all, all of this that we've covered so far, probably not news to you at this point. But what I wanted to go over was some speculations and thoughts about not only what the card uh, could do in terms of like the carnival leader skill uh, categories, all that kind of stuff. But also some other things I would like to see coming along with this as part of the celebration. So if we jump over to the wiki here, I've got this card up, which is... Uh, you know, kind of the closest we could get to a Vegeta, Trunks and Goku card from the movies, right? Because this is Vegeta and Goku from the Cooler movie. And the second Cooler movie is the movie that came before the Android 13 movie. So this is Super Saiyan Goku and Vegeta from the movie before the Android 13 one, right? So if we take a look at them, obviously they are on joined forces. They're pure Saiyans, full power movie heroes. Super Saiyans, all-out struggle, powerful comeback. So, 
There's a couple that we can, you know, cross off straight away. Pure Saiyans, obviously the card is not going to be on if Trunks is there. Um, full power, probably not. I don't know, because like this card is obviously them going full power against Metal Cooler, but that probably includes like the morale boost and like the power up bit at the end inside the core. Um, and then Trunks is there as well, right? So I could see them maybe not being on full power. Um, Join Forces, of course, is a given. Movie Heroes is a given. Super Saiyans is a given. Now, All Out Struggle and Powerful Comeback, those seem pretty relevant, right? Like, they were struggling against the androids, um, and then each of them kind of have that moment, like Vegeta and Trunks especially, where they go Super Saiyan, they obviously end up defeating 14 and 15, and then that causes the creation of the Fusion Android 13. So All Out Struggle and Powerful Comeback, I think you could say, would be relevant categories for them. Um, and then I've seen people, we were chatting about it in the stream earlier today, things like Accelerated Battle could be an interesting one as well. I mean, if we take a look at the, um, if we just go to the full list of categories here, um, and go down the list, I mean, we got <laughs> Chronological Order one is going to, there's a, there's a hell of a lot of categories in the game at this point, but... Um, I don't want to be going through this for too long. Full power, like we said, questionable. Transformation boost, I mean, it'd be interesting if they have the Super Saiyan transformation as their intro, but I think that doesn't qualify, so they probably wouldn't be on there, right? Obviously, they're going to be on Movie Heroes. They won't be on Goku Family or Vegeta Family. Maybe one day, Dokkan will update that so that Joint Forces characters get their own things, right? Super Saiyans, uh, Kamehameha... Cards have gotten away with Kamehameha joined forces ones as long as Goku does one, right? So even though Trunks and Vegeta obviously won't, if Goku does a Kamehameha as part of the super attack, it could potentially be on that category. So that would be interesting. Um, then we have, we keep going down, final Trump card's not going to be there. Exploding Rage, no. Um, <laughs> special pose. All Out Struggle, like I said, probably is a good one. Um, Connected Hope, no. Miraculous Awakening, no, right? They're not new forms for these guys at this point. Powerful Comeback, sure. I definitely think that could be uh, in there. Um, Master Evolution, no. I think they're normally... This only applies to, like, Super Saiyan 2 and above, right? Uh, Bond of Friendship, no. Accelerated Battle, again. This could definitely be in there, I think. Uh, Battle of Fate, obviously they don't give this to... Well, it's interesting, right? Because Gohan and Piccolo are on Battle of Fate, but they didn't put Broly and Gogeta on there, so... It's kind of interesting. I kind of wish they would just put these on the movie characters as well, right? For those who fought in like the final boss battle against the, the boss of the movie. But unfortunately, that is not the case. Um, and then the interesting one I think we'll have to see is Bond of Parent and Child. Because it's hard to know with some of the movies where they're supposed to fit into the timeline of the series. But Vegeta is not on Bond of Parent and Child until basically after or around the time of the Cell games. Which is obviously when he starts caring about Trunks after... Cell basically kills him. Um, so I don't know where this movie is supposed to fit in. I think the 13 movie is supposed to fit in before the Cell games, which if that is the case, then the card probably wouldn't have Bond of Parent and Child. If it's supposed to be set after that, maybe it will. But we all know Dokkan is weird with how they do categories anyway, so it would be cool if we get this, but at the same time, I could see them not being on there. So be interesting to see. Now, when it comes to their leader skill, because they are a carnival 200% lead, there's a couple of options that I think uh, could be in play, maybe some more likely than the others. Like, for example, Movie Heroes is one that I think is probably a bit less likely, because this team is just so good and so crazy. Like, we've seen a lot of these carnival teams, they're not getting a category that is absolutely already giga-busted, right? Because a full 200% movie heroes, like this team would be one of the better teams in the game for sure. Um, so for personally, I don't think we'll see movie heroes. I think one that's possible that would probably be an L overall though is Joint Forces. Um, I mean, you can make a very varied team and like all the LR, Goku and Vegeta's are on here. So, I mean, it would, you know, you could make a good team out of this, don't get me wrong, but I think it's probably one of the less exciting leader skills. But the one that I absolutely think, if I had to place a bet, I mean, you know, I wouldn't necessarily bet a huge amount of money, but if I had to place a bet like gun to my head, um, I think Super Saiyans as a 200% lead would be really good for them. Because um, I think the tagline of the movie on like the box art or something has something to do with like the three Super Saiyans and it shows Vegeta, Trunks and uh, Goku. So I think Super Saiyans 200% as a leader skill for them would be really, really good. 
because um, obviously there's still some units on here that are very good on that Kagri. The Spirit Bomb Absorb Goku, who got his EZA, needs Super Saiyan allies. So it's kind of appropriate that they would work really well like with him. Um, and, you know, we got some newer powerful units on there, like both the Part 2 uh, car uh, Carnival LRs from the Worldwide Celebration. Um, so overall, like, it's not a crazy huge Kagri. It seems like the perfect size with, like, the perfect selection of units for what we have seen from Carnival LR leader skills so far. So I think Super Saiyans 200% would be a very good leader skill for them. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. And then the other thing I wanted to mention very briefly, now I've seen some people already complaining that, you know, we're potentially getting another super class unit in part two when, well, again, it's not really part two, but we're getting this unit coming out after the release of Android 18 at 21. And it's yet another release where a Dokkan Fest has come out and then the next LR that comes out, whether you want to call it part two or not, isn't a benefit to them, right? Because if it is a Vegeta Trunks and Goku card, they're not going to be on 21's teams. They don't help to buff 21 at all. But, I mean, this is a separate celebration, technically, like we said, right? But the thing that instantly comes to mind for me is, if we're getting a new Carnival LR that is from the Android 13 movie, if you think about all the units from the Android 13 movie that are in the game at the moment, there's a couple of standalone Fusion 13s, uh, the 14 and 15 free-to-play card, the free-to-play 13 from the barbershop, they all have their EZAs already. So if we're going to get this new LR, what better time to EZA the AGL Android 13? And then, of course, he will be a big buff to Android 21's team, right? Because not only is he on her team, of course, but he's a support unit for Androids. Um, he needs a lot of work, right? Like, he, he's a very bare-bones passive. He just has basic start of turn attack and defense, gives allies support, and has attacks guaranteed to hit, which there's very few bosses that dodge in the game at the moment anyway. But, you know, still nice to have, I guess. Um, and then as long as you have two or more androids, he transforms on turn five. Unfortunately, one of those transformations that you can't stop from happening because it's not an active skill. Um, but that does mean that because it's not an active skill, they can change the condition of it. So it'd be kind of interesting to see. I don't know what the consensus would be from players of how they would want this to be. But it'd be kind of interesting if they made the condition slightly different in a way that you actually had the possibility to keep him as the support version. Like maybe if it was a HP restriction or something like that. Um, I don't know that they will do that though, right? I could see this changing to literally being like another, just another Android ally. And then starting from... I think it could stay turn 5, right? Because we probably want at least two rotations of him giving support. I suppose it depends, right? But then when he fuses into Android 13, uh, Fusion Android 13, um, gives himself key. Uh, he gets extra stats per target Goku ally on the team, which obviously not great for the 21 setup. But they could easily add, like, target Goku or Androids if they really wanted to give him the big buff. Because you're going to be using him on that team mostly anyway. So it's guaranteed to hit and disable guard, gets a crit when facing a Goku. I mean, that's fine. I think they should give him like high chance to crit in his passive and then guaranteed crit when you're facing a Goku. That would be pretty cool. Um, the only thing is he doesn't really have any super attack effect. So, of course, we would ideally like this to have some sort of like, you know, greatly raise attack and defense in one turn, something like that. Who knows? But he has a good, uh, he would be well poised if he's a good unit with a, get, and gets a good easy A. For some of these other extreme teams, right? Because he's on transformation boost, target Goku, power absorption. He's got big bad bosses. He's got nightmare. He's got fear and faith. Like he could definitely be good on some of these other teams outside of androids. Um, but of course, you know, with his transformation condition as it is now, you need other android allies for him to be able to actually transform. So if they reduce this, he could be useful on some other teams as well. So Android 13 EZA, definitely hoping to see this. And the other thing that I only thought about this morning is, remember they've been doing this a lot recently with some of these EZAs, where if the unit has a sub EZA, they include a bunch of missions that as long as you've done like the 30 stage EZA, you just get the extra set of medals so you can awaken the sub EZA unit. And a unit probably long forgotten by a lot of people who was the side banner unit for AGL 13, who definitely needs an EZA, is this physical trunks. Um, oh, this is actually his unawakened version because I went to this page via the medals page. But yeah, this is the uh, physical trunks. He, unfortunately, he goes Super Saiyan in his super attack, but he's not on the Super Saiyan's category, 
which is interesting because we have units like the physical LR Kid Gohan from Super Battle Road who goes Giant Ape in his 18 key and is on Giant Ape power. So maybe if they do EZA this guy and therefore remember he exists, they could actually update it so that he does have the Super Saiyans category because technically he should. Um, but this guy getting an EZA could be kind of cool. He was very dated, like even on release he wasn't great. Massively raised attack for one turn sounds cool, but only supreme damage, sacrifices 5% HP, and then he gets extra attack but loses 50% of his defense when performing a super attack, and then he builds up crit chance by being hit, which is also strange. So one thing I think would be really good for him for an easy A is he is a perfect candidate for one of those types of passives where you give him a whole bunch of damage reduction in slot one. And then when he attacks, he loses some of his defense, but he's tanking those hits that are coming in before he gets hit, right? I think that would be quite cool. That helps him build up this crit chance because he's taking hits in slot one. Um, and then, of course, obviously, you know, he needs a lot more work than that, but he could definitely be an interesting unit. And he's got links like Cold Judgment, which give a ton of defense at level 10. So, I mean, this guy could be interesting after an easy A for sure. And having the base like Trunks team name, he could probably fit into some teams um, quite... It'd be, of course, funny if the Carnival LR does have a 200% Super Saiyan's leader skill and they don't add this guy to the category so he doesn't have it. But he definitely has the potential to be an interesting easy A and this could drop literally at the same time as this guy if they do those missions and everything, right? So let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. What would you like to see from this uh, potential future Carnival LR? Um... Yeah, would you like to see the 13 EZA? Just let me know all your thoughts down below. We should hopefully see details tweeted out tomorrow. So if you guys come by my early stream at the usual time, uh, the stream schedule will be posted in all the usual places if you're not sure. But we should see this information come out during the early stream tomorrow. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing more. Hopefully even the animations. Uh, we shall wait and see. So let me know all your thoughts down below in the comment section. So that is going to be it for the video, guys. This has been The Masked Ningen. Smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Check out the links down below for the Discord and the merch store. And I will see you all again soon. Have a good one.